Hello, friends. Bread and Butter has a new paddle called The Loco. And true to their commitment to not only provide great products, but also have fun within the pickleball space with their sort of tongue-in-cheek marketing approach, each paddle comes with its own bottle of Loco-branded hot sauce while supplies last. So how does the Loco compete in the already saturated hybrid paddle arena? Let's find out. First of all, I want to give props to Bread and Butter for their sense of humor and attention to detail when it comes to marketing and the whole unboxing experience. Each paddle they've sent to me comes in its own custom design box. The logo is delivered right to your doorstep in a bright yellow box with red lettering that has a sort of Technicolor 1950s vibe. Mine came with a few extras to try out like the paddle eraser and lead tape, but for the first 1,000 customers, you can expect this free bottle of hot sauce. Doug tells me that there are only 100 remaining with that bottle of hot sauce, so if that's something that matters to you, you probably want to act fast. And this cool koozie and stickers are provided for everyone. The Loco costs only $140.25 with a discount code JOHNQ, and using my code also helps support this channel. It's a hybrid shape that's very similar to 6-0's now iconic double black diamond. So it has a rounded top and a gentle flare going from the bottom to the top of the paddle face. The advertised dimensions for both of these paddles are the same, 16.3 inches long by 7.7 .7 inches wide. But as you can see when you hold them up next to each other, the Loco is just a tad longer than the Double Black Diamond. My personal measurements for the Double Black Diamond actually come in at 16.2 inches, and I got 16.4 inches for the Loco. The Loco's handle length is advertised as 5.3 inches versus the Double Black Diamond's advertised 5.5 inch handle. But as you can see, there's no difference. And if anything, the Loco might have a very slightly longer handle. The swing weight of the Loco is 114, falling at the 39th percentile in my database, which is very light for a 16 millimeter hybrid shaped paddle. So the paddle feels light in the hand and has good maneuverability. At this swing weight, the Loco will feel the same as the Double Black Diamond, the Groovin Movin 13X, and some standard square shaped paddles like the Yola Scorpius and Volaire Mach 2 Forza. The Loco's twist weight is 6.1, falling at the 43rd percentile. The twist weight correlates with the width of the sweet spot from side to side on the paddle. To me, the Loco plays above its twist weight, and I thought the sweet spot felt good. Maybe not as large as the Double Black Diamond, but close. The Loco is thermoformed and it uses a raw carbon fiber face. You can see under the microscope that it uses a coarse peel ply, which looks the same as what they're using for the filth. And the Loco gets great spin. My tests averaged 2,091 RPM, placing it within the top tier spin category. My average serve speed, as measured with a radar gun, came in at 54.6 miles per hour, placing the Loco right near the median in my database at the 51st percentile. Pop, on the other hand, came in higher, and my punch volley speed came in at the 78th percentile. So what this all means is that from the baseline, you can expect moderate power with strokes to where you use a full swing like serves and drives. And at the kitchen, this paddle can generate a lot of ball velocity with shorter strokes like punch volleys, counters, and flicks. One of the first things I noticed about the Loco was its good hand speed. I'm coming from the 6.0 Ruby, which has almost the same shape, but its swing weight is a few points higher than the Loco. So with the Loco, I found myself getting into position quicker during quick hand exchanges at the kitchen, and for any situation where I had to move the paddle back and forth from forehand to backhand or vice versa. And with quick hand speed comes very good pop. So short swings generated a good amount of velocity on the ball. Punch volleys and counters felt really good with the Loco, not only because the paddle is very maneuverable, but also because the ball comes off hot. The power is there with full strokes, but I wouldn't say that this is the paddle's strength. Hard serves felt good, and drives from the baseline came off about like what I expected. Not super fast, but not too slow. One of the things that surprised me about the Loco is its solid control. 
Comparing it directly to the Double Black Diamond, the Loco has a more plush feel, particularly on soft shots like resets and dinks. When you're just dinking or trying to slow the ball down, there's a buttery feeling that really helps with control. Resets from the transition zone felt similar to the Double Black Diamond, but with the softer face, I got fewer pop-ups with the Loco during kitchen exchanges. But there's an important caveat here. Some people actually prefer a stiffer face to allow them to feel the shots better than with a more muted paddle. And some people might say that the Double Black Diamond has more control because they're more tuned in to the paddle and the ball. I tend to fall in the opposite camp and I generally prefer a more plush feeling paddle face, which helps me avoid pop-ups and helps more generally with control. The Loco also has great spin, which helps with control. The spin falls within the same top tier category as the Double Black Diamond, and these two paddles feel about the same to me in terms of spin for serves, drives, and slices, but the Loco has a coarser texture than the Double Black Diamond, and I do agree with Pickleball Will that the coarser peel ply helps spin the ball better during shorter types of swings that you generally use at the kitchen. So putting shapes on dinks and roll volleys, for example. The way the Loco adjusted to my game kind of reminded me a bit of the Rhombus R1 Nova. Although, whereas the Nova skews toward the power side of the spectrum, the Loco skews more toward the control and pop side of the spectrum. In other words, the Nova generates more velocity with full swings like drives, and then it softens up a bit with softer swings like dinks. On the other hand, the Loco doesn't generate as much power with the full swing, but it's softer and more controllable during the finesse game. But with shorter swings like punch volleys and flicks, the Loco generates more velocity than the Nova. So again, the R1 Nova leans toward power with moderate control and pop versus the Loco, which leans toward control and pop with moderate power. So making your way through the transition zone and rallies at the kitchen felt really good to me with the Loco. Comparing it to the 6-0 Ruby, which is currently my primary paddle, I'd say that two of the biggest differences are hand speed and power. The Ruby has a lot more power with full swings, but it's slower in the hands than the Loco because it has a higher swing weight. The Ruby also seems to have more dwell time with the ball. Balls seem to pop off the face of the Loco quicker. To me, the control is similar between the Loco and the Ruby. I think both of these paddles are excellent in this regard, but to me, the Ruby edges out the Loco in control because of a few subtle differences like more dwell time that spins and shapes the ball better and overall more stability in the hand so that the paddle resists twisting on off-center shots. When I was comparing the feel of the faces of the Ruby and the Loco, so how plush or stiff they feel, it was hard to make a direct comparison. They just feel different. But overall, I'd say the Loco feels a bit stiffer than the Ruby. The Ruby has a more consistent plushness throughout all aspects of the game, so during hard serves and drives and also with the soft game. But the Loco seems to feel stiffer with hard shots and more plush with soft shots. Another thing I noticed is that the Loco plays well above its twist weight. I was expecting it to have a smaller sweet spot and to twist in the hands more, but to me, it felt similar to the Double Black Diamond's sweet spot and stability. I mean, I would say the Double Black Diamond edges out the Loco in both of these, but not nearly as much as the twist weight measurements would suggest. I did try adding lead tape to the Loco, but I actually didn't care for it. I added lead at the four and eight o'clock positions and I really didn't notice that much difference in the sweet spot and the stability as I had hoped. To me, it wasn't worth the trade-off in hand speed. The lead also made the paddle feel a bit softer with more plow through and it gave a slight bump in power, but there was also a slight decrease in pop. So there's always trade-offs and at least currently, I prefer to play the Loco without lead tape. I have to say that I am duly impressed once again with Bread and Butter for creating another solid choice for a paddle. I was a bit worried when I first saw the Loco that it was just trying to be another double black diamond, but after playing with it, this thing has a personality of its own. And by the way, the hot sauce is good too. It's actually pretty mellow, not too hot, but with good flavor. In that way, it's similar to the paddle. There's enough to make it hot, but there's a smoothness to it so that the heat isn't out of control. 
If the logo sounds like it's the pedal for you, you can take 15% off the price, bringing the total down to less than $150 by using the code John Q at checkout. And at this price, the Loco is a very solid deal. As always, thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, I started a website and put all of my pedal metrics on a database that you can sort and search. There's also a ball database that compares hardness, rebound, and other metrics for all of the major ball brands out there. And you can subscribe to my newsletter to get early access information and some behind the scenes stuff. You can check all of that out at johnqpickleball.com.